So Twitter has a new tool that they announced today to bring more professional content to Periscope. Joining us to talk about Periscope producer is Kurt Wagner from Recode. How's it going, Kurt? Hi, how are you guys? Excellent. It's great to talk with you again. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how this new feature set works. So uh, the point of this is that you don't need a smartphone to use Periscope. Um, or excuse me, you can do you can broadcast on things that are better than a smartphone. So for example, if you were a news organization, you could use your high def cameras, you could use editing software, you know, put a, a lower third or an upper third, uh, you could put pre-roll ads, basically anything you can do um, to either capture or edit live video, uh, you can now do and then share that, that feed onto Periscope. So um, the point is, is not for probably you guys or myself or other kind of general Periscope users, but Think about the professional content creators out there, for example, news organizations that might want to, uh, you know, broadcast from a breaking news event and they want to do so on, on Periscope. Now they can do it thanks to this update that they announced today. Is this the kind of thing that um, that professionals would have to choose what platform they're streaming to or depending on their system, like it wouldn't matter. They could stream to Periscope, they could stream to Facebook Live as long as they have the back end to kind of support it they can it's not just to one single place right yeah my so the the way that it's set up with this periscope thing is actually so if you're a producer you're uh funneling your live feed which could be edited multiple camera whatever but the the live feed you're funneling uh to a url that is periscope specific but that doesn't necessarily mean as far as i know that you can also be uh you know broadcasting in other places in fact uh it would be incur I, you know i i actually know for a fact you would be able to uh, continue to broadcast over television, for example, and broadcast simultaneously on Periscope. Um, so I don't think this would eliminate any other possibilities. I think it's just simply offering up a new, uh, you know, an additional um, option for people. Sure. So Facebook has been paying content producers to live stream from Facebook in order to, you know, spread the platform, um, get people excited about it. Is Twitter doing the same thing with Periscope? No, so Twitter has never paid, well, claim, you know, claims that it has never paid uh, media companies to create Periscopes. And um, the argument from them is that if you're being paid and, and in some ways like being forced to do it, I mean, full disclosure, Vox Media, which owns Recode, we have a deal with Facebook, which which requires us to do a certain number of, uh, you know, Facebook lives. I don't know if it's every week or every month, whatever. And to be honest, you know, they're not always great, right? Because it's like, oh, we, we need to come up with a certain number of them and live video can be hard to do. And so Periscope's argument would be, well, we're not paying people to do this because we don't want them to be in that situation where they feel that they have to do this. And as a result, they do something that's that's not super high quality. Um, Facebook, of course, is taking the other approach, which is like, well, let's try and get as much of this content out there, get people familiar with it, get organiz you know news organizations familiar with it. Um, I, I don't. I don't know where I where I kind of lean in terms of the most appropriate way. I kind of think that the pushing people towards it can't does have its benefits. Um, but I will I will admit that it doesn't always look great if you're required to do it. Well, yeah, that's interesting that you say like it's it's better content when you're doing it just because you know you have content you know to deliver right. as opposed to a contract. I was wondering, does this seem more legitimate in a way um, because there's not there's not a deal between um, you know, the, the content producer and Facebook. Uh, for, so you mean for, for Twitter, like, is it more legitimate if folks do it? Uh, yeah, I guess I was, I mean, I, I was, you obviously have a deal and you're a journalist, so you're not like, you know, you, you are unbiased towards Facebook because you're a journalist. So there's not, you're not, you know, when you're Facebook live, you're not like saying how great Facebook live is, oh, or how no. great the play platform is. Obviously you're allowed to, to sing the praises of other platforms, right? Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know from from our like, like I said, some of the stuff we do on Facebook Live is is in, in my opinion not the best, and and that's stuff that that we are creating, and they are paying us. Uh, and when I say they're paying us, I'm not seeing that money. It is going to Vox Media, obviously. So it is a it is a decision that's been made high above my pay grade. But my point being is that like, if you and I thought you said it well, if you're going live because you have something cool that you want to show. Uh, that is always going to be better than going live because you are obligated to. And so um, the question, though, with that, with Periscope, is like how often then are people going to have something that they're willing to to share live on Periscope? Like is the audience there big enough for them to take the time and effort if they're not being paid to make Periscope a priority? And I would imagine that's going to be a real challenge for people.
Yeah, and a real challenge for Periscope to differentiate itself or pull itself away from, you know, in, in number of views from Facebook Live, which just has an insane pool of potential viewers. Uh, YouTube also is doing this. Again, a lot of viewers and kind of the, the infrastructure people are already there to watch. So it's a lot easier. Periscope has a lot to prove. I mean, you know, case in point, Facebook just today uh, launched the ability to stream Facebook Live to the TV. I mean, do, do you think that kind of points to uh, competitors kind of being just a few steps ahead of Periscope when it comes to this type of stuff? Yeah, well, in terms of competitors, I, I really think it's just uh, Facebook at this point. Um, you know, YouTube obviously offers a live streaming capability, but it's very different. It's It was kind of always, as far as I know, uh, intended for folks who are making pro professional type stuff. Right. Um, it wasn't like for you and I to use our smartphones to go live on YouTube, whereas Facebook and, and Twitter or Facebook and Periscope, that was very much the intention. I think that uh, Facebook ha has a bigger team. I think Facebook has more resources. Um, they certainly are, they, they feel a, a few steps ahead of Periscope in a lot of ways. And I think the television thing is interesting because uh, are you, you know, it implies that the content on Facebook Live is going to be good enough that you're going to want to kick back and watch it, right? Like maybe I'm going to watch on the couch and I'm going to watch a television show streamed live over Facebook or a news report. I just don't really feel like we're there yet, honestly. I, I haven't seen enough compelling stuff on any of these platforms that's going to make me want to kick back and relax on my couch and watch on television. Um, I think that's the big challenge, right? It's like how do you get – someone who's already producing for TV uh, to say Facebook or Twitter is important enough that we're going to make that a priority. And and I just don't think anyone's done it yet with the right material. Yeah, that is the big challenge. And I think it also kind of proves, proves how I've felt at least lately about live streaming, you know, all these live apps for streaming onto the internet, you know, they, they were created to a certain degree around we're, we're enabling you random person to live stream your life to the internet. And what I think it's kind of turned into is just the fact that that isn't always the most compelling content in the world. <laughs> like, you know, so somebody has to figure out why they're live streaming it. And then the bigger challenge is somebody has to figure out why they're going to watch it. Uh, right. And so, you know, maybe this is this, at least on Twitter's part and the Facebook live is also, you know, built, built this out and the move to TV kind of proves this as well. Maybe what they're realizing now is if they really want these products to shine, they have to get quality content in uh, that you do want to watch on your TV, let's say, or on the network at all, which is why, why Periscope Producer even exists in the first place, to elevate the, the quality of the content uh, because the person decides to stream content isn't quite as compelling. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And I mean, we saw Meerkat. I don't know if you, if you two mm -hmm. remember Meerkat. Uh, that was the whole reason that that app uh, really didn't work and why they pivoted into, into more of like a video chat feature um, was they just couldn't get people to, they had an audience, right? There were people who were willing to kind of like come and, and watch, but this, there was not enough good high quality material for them to distribute. And so, um, I, I don't know, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, uh, what the fix is for that because you, you know, so much of, of life, as much as we'd love to think like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to, to broadcast my walk from work? Um, there are very few people, maybe my grandmother, if she could figure out how to uh, download Periscope, maybe she would want to watch that. But I can't think of many other people who would. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, I mean, that is exactly what people said about Twitter in the beginning. Like, why would I just want to see what people had for lunch? Or why would I, you know, or that's sure. what they yeah, said about true. blogs. And you think about, I mean, Twitter has really, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about who's going to buy Twitter and why. And if you think about what's great about Twitter is we have the ability to choose exactly uh, who we follow. And it's so easy to follow or unfollow. If someone starts saying things that we're not interested in or that we don't agree with, then it's so easy easy to unfollow them. And, you know, the best people who tweet, I think, are people who have owned that medium. You know, it's that that many characters. They can be funny. And it's like that, that attention. They know how to and, deliver in that yeah, limited space. And, and yeah. it's so short. And then we move on to the next thing. And, but then taken as a whole, like we've talked about this, like this weekend, you know, when this all this crazy news breaks and you have all these people that, you know, if you've been working on your Twitter feed for a while, you're getting the smartest stuff at you, the funniest. Right. But like if you, so maybe like it just has growth. Like we have to figure out who's great in this medium. Right. Same thing with Vine. Like, you know, now that I have the Twitter 
app on my Apple TV, you know, that's how I watch the debates. But that's also how I sometimes watch Vines. Like you can do mm. the Twitter app. It's like, oh, well, I've got some minutes. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm going to watch some Vines. So I don't know. Maybe it just takes some growth and mm -hmm. people who get really good at this medium. And maybe it's not, you know, it won't be people's walk to work. Or it'll be somebody right. who's great at walking to work, right? <laughs> like the best work walker ever. <laughs> yeah. I think that's fair. I think that here's the big thing I want to see. I want to see them put Periscope directly into Twitter, right? Like I don't want to have yeah. to go to a different app. Um, Megan, you mentioned, I don't know if we were rolling yet or not, or, but you, we did a Periscope earlier today. You said you were watching on the web. You couldn't click, you couldn't comment, you couldn't heart. And it's just like, that stinks, right? What, what is there? Why is there not a go live button in my Twitter app where I click that, open the camera and broadcast all from the same app? That way I have all of the followers that I've accumulated on Twitter. All the people who are already on Twitter can like and comment and participate. I just, um, at this point, I don't see the benefit of having Periscope as a separate app. And I think that uh, if they really want to get this live streaming thing kind of more mainstream, then they put it in the app that the mainstream people use. And, and as of right now, it's not. So that will be, to me, the big signal that like they're ready to, uh, I don't know, give it, a, give it a real good push whenever that happens. I have to imagine they've thought about it, and um, I'm just waiting for it to happen. Sure. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Kurt Wagner, always a pleasure getting you on, man. Really appreciate it. Tell people where they can uh, follow your work online. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, I am at recode.net is where you can read all of uh, the good stuff we write. And then I'm Kurt Wagner 8 on Twitter. Fantastic. Thanks again, Kurt. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.